But yeah, for real. You yeah, wanna do that, that's gonna yeah. mess up Listen. the Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, I didn't get the but I was just over there. Somebody did. Somebody saw that. I was over there. Oh, yeah, no. You know what? That was another guy. I'm going to show you. I'm going to bunch up over here behind Joe. And then we're going to. Besides, we got large, extra large, double extra. You know we can't win. They want leather. There she is. Hello. Hey, Billy. Hi, Billy. Hello. 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 So I wanted to welcome everybody here today. Uh, my name is Ryan, I'm from Big Bank Land, Rochester. We're here at 394 Webster Avenue for the homecoming for Joseph Woods and his family. Um, the Woods family was moved out of the house on June 2nd, 2015, um, forcefully. Um, the Woods family has been trying to work out a deal with um, the bank, Midfirst Bank, for many years. They've been in this house for 25 years and and basically um, they were not willing to and unfortunately the city intervened on behalf of the bank and um, Joe's daughter was um, illegally arrested. Um, she was not even protesting along with six people who were um, just here to, to help who were willing to do civil disobedience if it came to it. Um, it's been now about a month and a half and Joe's house has been here sitting there um, had boards on it but not fully secured. People were coming by, people were taking the gutters off, people were going through the house, people were rummaging through the house. And Joe said basically he wasn't gonna sit around and let his house do this anymore. You know, this was his house, it's been here. So, so Joe has moved back into his house with the help of Take Back the Land because we believe that housing is a human right. Yes. And right. that this is a fundamental, this is a fundamental right for every human being, that every man, woman, and child should have access quality affordable housing yes, right. uh, quality affordable housing and we need to change the policies that have put us in this situation in this case FHA insurance policies bailing out the bank encouraging them to foreclose and evict on the local level the city using their police forces yes, not right. to to, um, to support the banks instead of working on helping people mediate to stay in there we think there are solutions to these problems this doesn't have to go over and over and over and we're here to make a statement. We're here to support Joe. We're here to make a statement. We can come together as a community. We don't need any more vacant homes. We have plenty of vacant homes in this neighborhood and all throughout Rochester. And we're going to be here. We're going to support Joe to stay in his home um, because we believe housing is a human right. All right, all right. Well, Joe, tell us from your side, <coughs> what, what happened here and how do you feel about it? Well, I feel a little um, discouraged as far as the bank's concerned. It's throwing me out. Uh, not willing to negotiate with me and even during the eviction process um, Coming back and forth through the house seeing gutters being taken out of the house 
um, my patio furniture stolen, my barbecue grill, rummaging through my property, and it's supposed to be securing a home, and it's not really secured. Actually, I would think it's the people that are securing the house that's doing the rummaging, actually. So, having said that, I decided to take it on my own, take that land, and go back into the home, and hopefully, hopefully and willing to bank a vehicle to sit down and negotiate something with me. Are they worried they'll kick you out again, or what's going on? Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm just willing to take that chance, because I've been here 25 years. I, don't, I like my community, and I'm going to stand for what I believe is fair. Housing is a human right, and I think everyone should have the opportunity to be in our own home. And after me being here 25 years and just having my mortgage transferred from this bank to the next, right. and you can't even prove you even own my property and still squeezing me out, I'm just gonna stay here and you know do what I gotta do, you know? Is this breaking and entering, trespassing? No, I don't think it's breaking and entering. It's not breaking and entering at all. Um, I think I have the right to have my stuff protected after the bank sale is going to be protected, and it's not. So having come out, I'm, I'm basically playing security guard for a month and a half, riding by the house and seeing things happen. And I just said, enough is enough, you know. Are you paying the bank? No, I'm not. They won't accept any money. They stopped accepting money from me years ago. I so, switched bank. And the banks, it's, it's just, it's just um, the song and dance routine. You send money, they send it back. Um, trying to do modifications and then in the modification process, asking me for money. I didn't know you had to have money to do a modification. I thought it was something that you should be willing to do and not ask me for um, $3,000 in order to get a modification started. This is, this is what basically started this whole process. I had some plans in the past, but nothing's guaranteed. It's a 30 year commitment. No one can say, well, I'm gonna be able to pay the house for 30 years. Things happen, people lose their jobs. You know, you have financial crisis. Now, having said that, when I did do a modification, things didn't work out, but they asked me for money at the end of that modification. Now they have $3,000 to give them. Then the next month, do another loan modification, do the same thing, now it's $5,000, now it's $7,000. Now, now I'm in this position. The last time I had an eviction, um, they called it off. <clears throat> the only negotiations we had, they were demanding $108,000 cash. Well, where are we gonna, that's, that doesn't sound like a negotiation. It sounds like much extortion. Not even you know, you can't just tell me, give me $100,000 cash. That's not the way you work things out. Do you want to pay the bank? Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to pay the bank, but you know, not hundred thousand dollars. It's not worth right. the house only assessed at twenty eight thousand. And, I just and I've been here twenty five years. I'm almost done with the house. So why should I give you hundred eight thousand dollars for a home that's only worth twenty eight thousand dollars? It's ridiculous. Joe, do you know how much money you put into this in the years that you were here? Well, you can see. I mean, I'm, I put over during the process of the foreclosure. I even notified the bank I was going to be doing some work. Twenty five thousand dollars in improvements I did to the home. It didn't matter. You know, going to court, sure. it's just one roller coaster right after another. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. It's, it's not it's not a good place, especially um, all the emotions. Uh, you go through it all, you know what I mean? And, I, and I'm going through it all. So. Are you afraid RPD will be coming back? Oh, no, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of RPD coming back. It's just the fact that Government you're almost right. Crooks. Because it could happen to someone in their family. It could happen to someone in your family, anyone. No one's guaranteed to have a job tomorrow. It's just all about the, the bottom line. It's about the government Why not find, a, find another place? Because I like it here. Been here 25 years. It's my house. Right. I raised my the kids here. Stop robbing people. And I want to be here. I like my community. I'm comfortable here. You know what I mean? So some people may not, but I'm comfortable. I've been here since 1990. I watched the neighborhood right. really improve. This neighborhood has really improved over the years I've been here. You know what I mean? So this is my place. I'm going to stay here. What were you doing when you weren't living here? Where, Pardon me? where were you? My sister, my mother, um, all over the place. And I'm, in, I'm independent. I mean, I know my mom, my sister, let me say to my, I like to have my own place. You know, I got family support, but it's not It's not like being in your own place, you know what I mean? It's no, like, no place like home, you know? And it's like the Wizard of Oz. Mid First won't work with you on trying to make something work? No, no, Racketeering. Mid First, basically, my point is this here. You're chasing good money after bad. You're doing this five years, you guys have actually spent more money to get me thrown out of here than you was willing to come to the table to work with me. You spent thousands of dollars to get me thrown out of here. Right. And you can right. sit here and work a deal right. with me. So Crooks. where's the um, human part of that? I mean, I don't understand it. You, I know you got more money than me. You don't have to prove it. Let's just go to the table and work something out reasonable that I can afford to pay. And everyone's happy. It helps everyone. This house goes vacant. It doesn't just affect me. It affects the whole community. It affects That's the whole right. city. It, it really, it does. No taxes. House becomes an eyesore, becomes another zombie property. Oh, now the city's gosh. complaining about yeah, zombie burn. properties. Well, here, here's the possibility of one being a zombie property if I don't take it back over. You know and what I mean? What happened, you know, you were saying people come across hard times. What happened where you couldn't? Well, I ran into some financial difficulties, you know what I mean, by me being the only source of income at the time, and it sort of got tough to pay the bills. But I notified the bank right away, and it's one thing after another. You know, the loan modifications, some of them didn't work out, some of them did. 
What is it? And I'm, I think it's, it's the 30 year commitment. I still have five years left on the commitment, but you're still squeezing me out. Mm. And I just want to say one thing just to put it in context. Um, Joe's following in the footstep of Kathy Lennon, where in, in uh, Mother's Day 2011, after she was evicted, she moved back into her home in a similar situation. And what happened was is that, um, as of today, she's still in her home. And the bank acknowledged that they had done wrong, and Bank of America and, Betty, and Franny Mae actually gave her back the house. And where was this? This was on Nine Ravenwood. In, um, Rochester. in Rochester. I think I may have covered that. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so Joe is Joe is simply following Kathy's footsteps. We, we we think we can work out a deal that's beneficial for Joe, and what's beneficial for Joe is beneficial for the whole community. Because right, because if this is if this house goes vacant, this is bad for the whole community, and it sets a precedent over and over that the police can just come and support the banks. And we say, let's come together. We think that if the people come together at a table, we can all work the we can all work things out between the government and the banks, a way that benefits the whole community. Um, but but that means we're gonna have to sit down and talk about this, work it out. Do you believe having this rally, bringing public attention to this, that this will make a difference, that mid first will come to the table? Yes, I, I think it'll make a difference. That's certainly the hope because um, you know you know, Mid First is in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. They don't know Rochester. They don't know this neighborhood. They don't know how this is affecting us. But they need to know that this is more than just a financial transaction. This house means everything to this family and it affects the whole community. So we need to raise awareness that there's real people here. There's a real community here. And we're going we're gonna to support that. And they didn't know this is not just a financial transaction. We need to support our families. It's a, it's a fact that Mid First owns this property. That's correct. Joe doesn't. Right. So being inside is trespassing. I mean, we think that this house should go back to Joe, and if and if and if he's going to move back to make a statement, I think maybe that's what it's going to have to take for him to get his house back. We'd like to see FHA, Fannie, Freddie have less bank-friendly uh, policies and practices because the banks definitely, definitely, absolutely don't deserve. It that kind of friendship from the, from the lending agencies. They just don't. Well, they lied, cheated, and steal to get the houses back, uh, to, to put people in trouble in the first place, and now to take the houses back. They the insurance, and I imagine it's FHA that owns this now, not the... Well, actually, I don't the bank still owns it right now. Oh, okay. But it's basically on. The center for the bank is, they have to have me out of the property in order for FHA to get out on the loan for insurance. So, I think FHA should have some responsibility in this well. It's supposed to be for low income people. It's supposed to be for low income people. Improve it. You know, make the bank work something out. <clears throat> because the bank can't get compensated unless that amount of the property. And that's FHA's um guideline. <laughs> well, everything has to physically be off the property in order for them to be compensated. And I just don't think it's right. And, for, and from our main perspective, our main concern is not what's legal and illegal, but what's moral and immoral. And we think it's immoral for this family to be put out while we have his house sitting here. People are rummaging through it. People are taking stuff out where he could be living in the house. And so that's our concern is what's moral. He's living really in the out. house and paying. Right, and which is what he wants to do. Payment worked out. Yes. It was trust. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.